I can't do this anymore. I know, this is so boring. I hate essays. I wish they'd give us something fun to do, like a role play. I know. Oh, what's your idea? Let's play charades. Charades? Sounds like a good time. So, you guys ready? Ready, okay, go. Let's go. Seriously, I don't feel very well. Guys, <laughs> I don't feel... Oh. Guys, I think he's having a myocardial infarction. A what? A heart attack. Oh, no. Time is of the essence, and it is essential to recognise the symptoms because time is muscle. The, the most crucial symptoms can present as severe chest pain, Especially ah. in the left side, which radiates to the left arm. My arm really hurts. Diaphoresis. <sighs> sure is hot in here. Pallor. I'm pretty pale. Dyspnea, or shortness of breath. Struggling to breathe. But abnormal symptoms can also present, especially in women and the elderly. These may include nausea and vomiting. Mm, mm, mm. <clears throat> Referred pain to areas such as the neck or epigastric and abdominal pain. Ooh. Ooh. That's sore too. And anxiety, or an impending sense of doom. I don't know. I think I, something's going wrong. I'm not, something's not happening right. Myocardial infarction, clinically known as the death of myocardial cells. So myocardial inf infarction occurs due to occlusion of one of these coronary arteries or, the, or its branches. It can present in full occlusion of the artery, which usually uh, presents as a STEMI myocardial infarction, or the other type is a partial occlusion of the coronary arteries, which presents as a non-STEMI. Um, this affects the myocardial sites, which look like this cell down here. Um, as the occlusion means that the myocardiocytes are not receiving enough oxygen and blood and nutrients and therefore they die. Um, the dying myocardiocytes then send signals to the brain um, and set off the, um, and this results in pain and it also sets off the RAS system and other compensatory systems which is the result of the symptoms said before. Time is of the essence due to the fact that the myocardiocyte is interconnected. This is for the function of contractility. Therefore, dying myocardiocytes in fact in, in, <laughs> impact a bigger part of the tissue and therefore the in fact lesion, if, if not intervened appropriately, can affect the ventricles and this can be crucial and result in death. To ensure survival, we must send Matt to the hospital. So Matt's come into the emergency department today. We're very concerned with him because he's complaining of chest pain that's radiating down the left arm. He's diaphoretic and complaining of nausea. Because of the chest pain, we're very concerned. So straight away, we, we, uh, we put 
attached an ECG and also completed a thorough physical e examination. Ah uh, yes, the ECG results. Hmm. Ooh. Ah. Uh, so this ECG trace shows an elevated ST section. This indicates a full thickness myocardial infarction, otherwise known as a STEMI. Besides an ECG, there's a few other things that we also do to diagnose a myocardial infarction. They include a thorough patient history and physical examination, alongside taking blood tests, testing for uh, things such as troponin. So Matt, talk to me about your history. Have you ever had any previous complaints of chest pain, history of angina? Yeah, past week I've had a bit of chest pain. Okay, so the past few weeks you've been complaining of chest pain? Yeah. So you've had chest pain? Yeah. That's not good. No. A history of angina and chest pain that's been occurring for a couple of weeks before the diagnosis of an infarction are critical features during the diagnosis of an infarction when taking a patient's history. Ah oh yes, I'm a doctor. Ah, oh, Matt's test results. We took bloods earlier today to test for a couple of different things. Those were, uh, we tested for troponins I, T and I, as well as creatinine kinase MB. Troponin I is actually useful in quick identification of cell death as it is rapidly released into the bloodstream during uh, cell damage. Troponin T is also tested for, but not as accurate as troponin I. Uh, creatine kinase MB is a strong indicator of muscle damage, however it is not specific to the heart. The troponin enzymes are specific to the heart and give us a good idea of what's going on and how much damage has just occurred. Okay, now, although it is specific, it isn't specific to myocardial infarction. So it can be used to diagnose both ischemic and non-ischemic heart damage. We're going to use it within the clinical context of the situation, alongside the ECG results and the patient history. Next up is the management of myocardial infarction. Management must be timely and effective to preserve myocardial tissue and prevent further necrosis. Our interest is assisting in cardiac output and uh, preventing tissue loss. ECG should be taken every eight hours um, to uh, see if there's any elevated STC segments. We should also do continuous cardiac um, monitoring to detect arrhythmias and further complications like reinfarction. Next, what we need to do is oxygenation of the patient. If the patient's oxygen saturation is below 93%, then it might require um, administration of oxygen, um, or, in, or in severe cases, um, mechanical ventilation. Um, we might do nasal prongs, or we could do a Hudson mask. Um, as you can see, Matt is looking quite breathless, and it seems like he's having difficulty getting oxygen in his lungs. This is a problem, as um, if there's not enough oxygen, there uh, can lead to chest pain, and there's enough, not enough oxygen getting to, a, to the ischemic tissue, leading to further necrosis and the deterioration of the patient. We should continuously do um, oxygen saturations um, to uh, guide our decisions with nurses. We should also position the patient in a high Fowler's position if they are comfortable. This increases chest expansion and assists in venous pulling. Um, in the lower extremities, um, which assists in, uh, in increasing oxygen saturation. It's also important to um, get IV access. Um, New South Wales recommends um, two IV cannulas. This is to help emergency drugs in case of reinfarction or complications. It's also important to reduce the patient's anxiety. This is a traumatic time, so it's important for the nurse to be compassionate, empathetic and have open communication with the patient. Um, this reduces the patient's heart rate and uh, decreases the um, oxygen needed by the heart, which can help uh, reduce the deterioration of the patient. Okay, continuous vital signs should be taken for the patient to see if there's a deviation from the patient's baseline. This could um, 
be seen through the deterioration of the patient. And we should also do a physical examination. This could be um, looking at heart sounds and also the patient breathing. Lastly, it's important to promote bed rest or limited activity. This puts less pressure on the heart. Um, so yeah, Matt, lie down and relax and you should be getting better. Another aspect of patient management is the administration of medications. Um, to talk to Matt a bit more about how these medications work and why they work, we're going to bring in our pharmacist. When a patient is suffering from a suspected myocardial infarction, the administration of an antithrombolytic, an anticoagulant and analgesia will assist in the condition. Set. Go. In order for aspirin to reach full levels of effect that is required within the patient, it is critical for healthcare workers to establish and administer the appropriate dosage. Patients suffering from myocardial, myocardial infarction could expect to receive an average dose of 300 milligrams on arrival to the emergency department. Aspirin is a highly effective, fast-acting drug as its components are rapidly metabolized, initiating a fast reaction time in the body to create a rapid response. This is very beneficial for patients suffering from a myocardial infarction as this will reduce the chances of a blood clot. Blood clot. Heparin is an antithrombolytic medication that should be administered with intermittent intravenous injection after being diluted with 50 to 100 milliliters of 5% dextrose injection. For patients suffering from a myocardial infarction, it is essential that the antithrombolytic medication is administered rapidly to prevent further growth of a clot that could potentially occlude the vessel. When calculating the dosage of heparin for patients, while it varies from, for individuals, the standard guideline is 80 units per kilo IV bolus, followed by a continuous infusion of 18 units per kilogram per hour. When treating a patient suffering from myocardial infarction, it is a natural response for the patient to be experiencing heightened levels of anxiety and stress. A way to instantly alleviate some of the stress is by reducing the pain. Morphine is under the drug classification of opioid analgesia, therefore regarding it as a, high as a high pain reliever. The selected pharmacokinetics of morphine make the drug very favorable for healthcare professionals when considering an analgesia most appropriate for a myocardial infarction. The appropriate drug dosage for patients suffering from a myocardial infarction is two to four milligrams of morphine administered through intravenous therapy five to 15 minutes. Oh, that feels so much better, thank you. However, depending on the severity of the pain the patient is experiencing, these levels can be altered depending on the patient's needs. When a patient presents asymptomatic, asymptomatically of a myocardial infarction, the dosages traditionally start high to initiate a rapid response from the body, but will gradually decrease with the pain. Ischemic heart disease has been the primary cause of fatalities in Australia for the last few decades. It's very important for nurses to be able to understand and recognise the signs and symptoms of a mild myocardial infarction, then be able to assist in the diagnosis of a myocardial infarction by taking the appropriate uh, patient history and performing a physical examination alongside uh, in the medical team. As well as this, it's important that we are able to manage the patient suffering from a a myocardial infarction and understand the drugs that are going to be administered to this person. From all of us, thank you for watching. This heart attack, I've gotta get away now.